Hello students, so I am Dr. Gayatri, your OBS and Gain faculty and let's discuss the further topic in our NSI 25 series. So today we would be discussing how to differentiate the different types of vaginitis that is going to lead to the lower genital tract infection. So vaginitis can be caused either due to a candidiasis or it could be trichomonas vaginitis or this could be due to bacterial vaginosis. So let's see first the organisms that is implicated in this. In candidiasis, it is due to the fungus that is candida albicans. Whereas in case of trichomonas infection, it is due to trichomonas vaginalis which is a parasite. Whereas in bacterial vaginosis, as the name suggests, it is a bacterial infection caused by a polymicrobial flora that is multiple bacteria. But the most common one that is implicated is Gardenella vaginalis. So, Gardenella vaginalis is going to lead to this bacterial vaginosis. So, now let us discuss the vaginal discharge that is typically seen in each of them. In bacterial vaginosis, it is a thin greyish white discharge whereas in case of a trichomonas vaginalis, it is green frothy discharge that can be seen. Whereas in candidiasis, there is a typical white curdy discharge. It is also known as the cottage cheese appearance due to this white curdy discharge. Now coming to the pH, all of these are going to make the pH more alkaline. That is the pH is going to be more than 4.5 except in case of candidiasis in which the normal acidic vaginal pH is maintained which is between 3.5 to 4.5. So, in candidiasis, the pH is less than 4.5, whereas in bacterial vaginosis and trichomonas, the pH is going to be more than 4.5. Pruritus is a typical symptom and it is seen in case of trichomonas and candidiasis. But pruritus is characteristically absent in case of bacterial vaginosis. Please note that. Along with that, though the pruritus is not present, the bacterial vaginosis is going to have a typical foul smelling discharge that is a fishy odor which is typically seen. The fishy odor is seen in case of bacterial vaginosis. Whereas there is the typical splash dysuria which can be seen in case of candidiasis. What this means is as there is intense itching and pruritus, there can be vulval excoriations and once the urine splashes on this area, there could be pain. This is known as splash dysuria which is seen in case of candidiasis. In case of trichomonas, we can see the strawberry appearance of the vagina. So where is the strawberry appearance of vagina seen? It is in case of trichomonas vaginalis. Now coming to the investigations that is done, wet smear can be used to differentiate all of this. In case of candidiasis, we can see the fungal hyphae. In case of trichomonas, we can see the trichomonas parasite. Whereas in case of Gardenella vaginalis, it has the typical clue cells. Very important, clue cells are seen in case of bacterial vaginosis. That is basically the vaginal epithelium which is studded by this so many bacteria. So, clue cells are typically present in case of bacterial vaginosis. This is an image based question as well. So, if they ask you the investigation of choice, it is wet mound. But the gold standard investigation is gram staining in case of bacterial vaginosis. As it is a bacteria, it will take up the gram stain and it has this Nugent score. You have to just remember the name Nugent score is used in bacterial vaginosis. Whereas in candidiasis, we do the culture. We can use the sabrose dextrose agar whereas in case of trichomonas also the gold standard investigation is culture again. Coming to the treatment both trichomonas as well as bacterial vaginosis is treated using metronidazole. Metronidazole is given for treatment whereas for candidiasis we give the patient fluconazole. Please note that bacterial vaginosis is not a sexually shared infection. It is not an STI. So, partner treatment is not needed in case of bacterial vaginosis. So, by using this, you can differentiate all these different types of vaginitis. This often comes as a clinical question for you. Another important thing is regarding the AMSELS criteria. So, for bacterial vaginosis, we can use the AMSELS criteria. 
this involves four criteria among this the first is the vaginal discharge there is the thin gray vaginal discharge that is seen the second is that while adding koh there is a typical ammoniacal smell when we add koh there is the release of amines which will lead to the typical ammoniacal smell so this is also known as amines test so that is positive in case of bacterial vaginosis third is the ph is alkaline which is more than 4.5 fourth is the presence of clue cells which is characteristic hope now you will be able to differentiate all these types of vaginitis very easily and that simplifies us the topic so until we meet next time bye bye